Do you need the energy from this today? Oh, I can just feel there's something going on here. I can feel it. Hello, people. I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today I am back with my so popular almanac series. And of course, we're looking at the beautiful month that is June. So as with all these videos, what I want to do is give you a witchcraft overview for those rites and rituals that you can do throughout the month of June that sit well with June's energy. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty detail of day to day witchcraft rituals. So with that, let's get on with the show and talk about the month of June. June is named for the Roman goddess Juno, who is the goddess of marriage. In the Anglo-Saxon times, one of the names for the moon in the month of June was the dyad moon. And the dyad word means pair or pairing because, of course, this is the month for marriage. June is the tip-top month to get married in, not only because the weather is OK, but the flowers are in abundance and don't they look magnificent. Of course, the other name for June's moon is the rose moon, as June, of course, is the month of roses. And then, of course, we have that wonderful but tippet from the 1800s, married in the month of roses, June, your life will forever be a honeymoon. So get married now, definitely have some roses at your wedding, and this is the perfect month with which to do it. So with this in mind, let's have a quick look at roses in witchcraft in general. Of course, every nationality, culture and religion will claim a rose. After all, it is one of the greatest of flowers in the world. The Christians like to use it as purity for the Virgin Mary, which I think is taken directly from the pagan form of purity and balance. Sadly, of course, as with all things pagan, there is very little written down, but tradition, which is where we get most of our pagan rituals from, does state that the rose is for purity and love. Love spells, therefore, perfect for the month of June, especially using roses. Roses were often used in love and divination, and it was said if you took a rose at midnight on midsummer and held it close to your heart that night, you would dream of your future loved one, and that rose would never fade throughout the year, and you would be married by next summer. So that's worth a try, isn't it? Roses, of course, are the undying symbol of love. I particularly like the fact that roses feature a lot in tarot cards, and here they are brought about as purity and balance, as you can see from these tarot cards, the fool, death, the magician. They all show a rose symbolism, and that is because the rose is a very magical flower. I also just want to give the tradition of Nolly's Red Rose. Lady Constance was the wife of Sir Robert Nolly, and this is in the 1300s. Lady Constance decided to build a footbridge between two of her properties, which were near each other in Seething Lane in London. However, she failed to ask anyone's permission, i.e. the Lord Mayor. So he then decided that he should investigate this, which he duly did, but finding Lady Constance to be as so beautiful and so stunning, he fined her one red rose per year. And this is still paid today, this tradition being upheld by the liverymen of London. A red rose is presented to the Lord Mayor at Mansion's house on or around the solstice in honour of Lady Constance. Of course, June is also the time for the summer solstice, that wonderfully pagan festival. Now, I'm not going to talk very much about the summer solstice in this video, because I want to dedicate a whole video about it, and I'll do that later on next week. So look out for that. 
However, if you can't wait that long, you can look at last year's video, which I'll put up here for you, because there is a lot of pertinent information, which I'm hopefully not going to repeat in this year's video, but have a look and let me know what you think. The other great thing about June is not just the flower rose, but also the very famous St John's wort. This is a shrub with great yellow flowers, which flowers around the solstice period. And so as a result, as it's only still the end of May at the moment, I don't have any to show you. So here are some pictures, which I'm sure you will agree it is a very summer sunny plant. St John's wort used to be known as Chase Devil and this is because it's believed to keep at bay the witches and devils that are extant around the summer solstice. The Christian faith, in order to try and sort of absorb the solstice pagan religion into their own, made the 24th of June the Christian Midsummer. And this is the day when you would place St John's wort over the lintels of your house in order to keep away those devils and witches which are about to mite. St John's wort, however, is a wonderfully medicinal plant. It's said it can cure hallucinations. It was used in exorcisms by the Catholic Church. Uh, it is great for depression and especially symptoms of PMT and the menopause. Wonderful for all of that. It was also used for covering wounds and actually if you hold a St John's wort leaf up to the sunlight you can see that it's perforated with lots of holes. This is said to be the devil poking a needle through the leaves of the plant in order to destroy it because it was one of the most medicinal, beneficial and devil scaring plants of its day. Hence its name Chase Devil. However, one of my favourite uses for St John's Wort, if you are having problems with infertility, then get yourself naked and go and pick a St John's Wort on Midsummer's Day. And this will guarantee a pregnancy by the spring. However, watch out because Midsummer Day is the day that St John's Wort is at its peak magically. And if you accidentally tread on a flower this day, you're liable to be whisked off by the fairies, taken miles away and dunked in a ditch. So I'm warning you, don't tread on St John's Wort on Midsummer. It is actually quite difficult to pick because it moves away. And I actually have a story about this. I spent a lot of time last year trying to find that St John's wort that grows in my garden. Now, in normally I spend my time pulling it up because I find it a bit of a weed. Last year when I wanted some for a video that I was doing, I went outside to the garden to try and find some and lo and behold, could not find any, even all the places that it normally is growing. A week later, I went back and there it was. It does like to just move away if you're trying to pick it. It is known that that is what happens. Likewise, if you're looking for a husband, if you pick a sprig of St John's wort on the 24th of June, you will have one by the next year. So, and if you don't have a baby by the next Midsummer's Day, just gather it naked, and then when you're suffering from postnatal depression, you can take St John's wort to help you get better. It's an all round female herb, this one. And finally, for St John's Wort, if you place it over your lintels, this means your home is protected from lightning. So, that is St John's Wort in the month of June. Now we've done an overview of the month of June, let's have a look at the nitty gritty days. So let's start with the 1st of June. This is the beginning of the meteorological summer which means that we are officially in high summer. However, don't get your hopes up. Three out of four Junes tend to be wet and it's to do with the way that the weather currents come in over May. If it is very dry in June, then we're gonna have a pretty rubbish July and August. The first Thursday of the month, which is obviously a changeable date, so therefore I can't give you one, is always Appleby Horse Fair. Now I mention this here because it is one of the biggest gatherings of gypsy and traveller culture. It is also rife with fortune tellers and so should you want your fortune told, the real true gypsies are there, 
go and get your fortune told and they'll probably be right. Alternatively, you can just book a session with me because I'm bloody good at fortune telling, you know. The thing about fortune telling is that nobody ever believes you when you say this is going to happen. They're like, yes, 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 rubbish, 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 rubbish. But that is the curse of the person who tells the future. No one ever believes you. And it's only after the event that they come back and go, oh, okay, oh yeah, you were right, you were right, you were right, yeah, I know, I know. The 14th of June is the night of the full moon. And this is a super moon, meaning that the moon is closest to the earth and looks at its biggest. It also will have probably a hazy edge to it because the moon is very low in our atmosphere at the moment. Um, in winter, it's very high because obviously we're on an elliptical orbit. And so there is an atmospheric haze around the moon softening its glow, but it will be large and glorious. So do make some moon water. I like to make rose charge moon water around this time, which simply means placing some rose petals in your moon water to use in future love spells. Next date in our calendar is the 21st of June, the day of the summer solstice. The solstice happens at 10.13 this day, and it is when, of course, we light the midsummer bonfires. Now, Midsummer Bonfires has been lit throughout history forever. I just wanted to talk through a couple of other traditions that happen throughout the UK, which if you're near these areas, you might like to go and do. There is a village called Wicker and a village called Zenor, both of which are in Cornwall, down in the south, and they are connected by a footpath. Many years ago, this footpath had a large boulder placed upon it, which, you know, the footpath had to go round. And it was always said that this was known as the Witch's Rock. This Witch's Rock was hailed as having great magical power. And if on midsummer at midnight, you went to the Witch's Rock and touched the rock nine times, it was said to protect you from all manner of evils. However, local landlords and local people obviously thought that all these witches gathering in midsummer at the Witch's Rock were dreadful and devil-led and broke it up. They failed to notice that further up the path and more towards Zenor is the Giant's Rock. Now this rock is obviously some sort of rock of initiation because on Midsummer tradition states that if you walk around this rock nine times, the magical number nine, you will receive the powers of a witch. So try it. Midnight, Midsummer, go to the Giant's Rock in Zenor and try and get your magical powers fired up. You might not be able to get to Zeno on midsummer at midnight though. However, you can most likely go to your local village parish church because it is an old custom that if you stand watching the porch of the church at midnight on midsummer, you will see the shades or doppelgangers of those people who will die in the parish this year. I have come across one or two, well, one person who claims to have seen something along these lines. So have a go. Let me know if you do that. I'd love to find out. Otherwise, do try and get yourself down to Cornwall again. Cornwall is terribly pagan, by the way. Very Celtic. Love it. In Penzance, they do the Maisie Day's Serpent Dance. Maisie is an old Cornish slang word meaning maddened or intoxicated, you know, taken with the thrill. They do this serpent dance where they dance around the streets in a winding fashion to bring in the summer solstice. And this is obviously just the leftovers of pure paganism. The 29th of June is the day of the new moon and the new moon is in Cancer. It's considered that each new moon has a particular energy which it takes on from the astrological sign with which it is associated. And so Cancer is all about the hearth and the home. So this is the time to make new plans and new ventures concerning your family and consider how you are going to spend a loving time with those that you care for. 
The 29th is also Apple Christening Day. Now this, I think, must come from the wassailing that we did in the winter, where you beat your apple trees with sticks and you poured libations of cider over them to bring forth a good harvest. Well, it is on this day that you should go out into your apple orchards and christen the actual small, tiny apples that are forming. It will be particularly good for your crop if it rains whilst you're doing this. So there's a bunch of you going out into the orchard, blessing your apple crop for the year. Hopefully it'll be raining and you'll have a bumper crop. To be fair, I do not know what you do to christen an apple tree. I do, I presume you sort of name the apples. I name these apples all mine, maybe, <laughs> who knows. And finally on the 29th, I wanted to talk about the Appleton Borming the Thorn. There is a beautiful thorn tree in the middle of Appleton Village and on this day it is hung with garlands, hung with ribbons and hung with flowers and the local children dance around the tree. It is blatantly, obviously, a leftover pagan worshipping rite. And the Appleton Hawthorn tree that is standing there today was replaced in the 1960s as it was said to have been taken as a cutting from the Holy Thorn of Glastonbury. Now this Holy Thorn is one of the most magical trees in the history of the UK. It is where all sorts of things happened. It's very closely associated with Merlin and Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table amongst many other pagan traditions. So that is my magical witchcraft for the month of June. If you'd like to know more about this, I am available on Patreon for this. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill for all the details and you'll be able to find me there. Do leave me a comment about which one you're going to do, if any. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And I will see you with my next video concerning the midsummer madness that's going to happen on the 21st in a few days.